dangerous winter weather hits California and takes two lives. Cuban defectors stage a daring escape in their flight to freedom. And police rescue a woman held hostage in a synagogue. Now from KTTV Los Angeles, Harris, Devine, Thompson, Garcia, this is Fox News. Good evening, everyone. A tense situation in Torrance tonight. An armed man has been barricaded inside the headquarters of the Lexus Automobile Company for hours now. He has fired several shots into the streets. Our Cristino Gonzalez live there with the latest in this bizarre case. Cristina? Well, Chris, the first thing I have to tell you is that Torrance police have asked us to keep the lights off. So please bear with us as for security reasons. We are standing right in front of the building, right behind us, where the man has been barricaded since earlier today. At about 4 in the afternoon, the man walked into the Lexus headquarters with a 12-gauge shotgun, shooting several rounds as employees ran out of the building. Most of those that saw him at that point in time fled out of the building. Uh, the remainder of the employees that were inside at one, some point in time or, or another were either evacuated or assisted in being evacuated, most of that being accomplished by Toyota uh, personnel. By 6 o'clock, SWAT teams had surrounded the building, getting ready to go in. That's when the man called a local radio station. He did make contact with somebody at KFWB and explained to reporters at their uh, Hollywood offices that apparently uh, he himself, being a disabled person, was dissatisfied with what he perceived to be Toyota's hiring practices uh, and uh, apparently was concerned over the fact that they either don't or don't hire enough, don't hire at all or don't hire enough uh, individuals who are handicapped. Lexus spokespeople here say no one recognized the man as a former employee, adding they don't understand his alleged complaints about hiring practices for disabled people. Again, we repeat, we must keep our lights off during this live shot for security reasons. We're standing right in front of the building. As a matter of fact, we're told, talking about this disabled thing, that the last employee to leave the building this afternoon was a woman in a wheelchair. That's what Lexus uh, spokespeople told us. Uh, no one heard, as far as we know. Police do not believe that there are any hostages in there, but shots have been fired through the night, uh, non lately. The man has promised that he is going to give himself up, that he's going to come out, but so far that has not happened. We have this camera right here. We also have a camera behind the building waiting for that to happen. So far, it hasn't. Uh, they are still negotiating. Uh, one option that officers have at this point, again, to continue negotiating, obviously, but to also turn off the power in the entire block. They have not elected to do that thus far. Again, one man barricaded himself in the building behind us since 4.30 this afternoon. No one hurt thus far. We will keep you updated. Live in Torrance, I'm Cristina Gonzalez, back in the newsroom. All right, Christina, be careful. The other big story of this day and night, foul weather up and down the length of our state. Northern California has gotten the brunt of it. A brutal storm there claiming two lives and paralyzing major highways. The storm pelting the northern part of California for the second day in a row. Mountain areas have been pounded by blizzard conditions. More than two feet of new snow fell around the Lake Tahoe area. Heavy snow reported down to the 3,000-foot level in the northern Sierra Nevada. And as we said, the storm has shut down some major highways today. So if you're planning on some holiday traveling, please pay attention to what we're about to tell you. Highway 50 from Pollock, Pines, and Myers has been closed down due to heavy snow and zero visibility. Also shut down, Highway 80, that's Interstate 80, between Applegate and the Nevada line. Authorities say both of those roads will remain closed until the visibility improves. Also, major delays on Highway 88 around Carson Pass because of avalanche control there. Motorists on their way to Tahoe had to prove that they were residents in order to get through. The road is so hazardous that officers are allowing only local, uh, local residents through. And that, of course, means bad news for dozens of people trying to head for the ski slopes. As we said, the storm responsible for at least two deaths. More details on those now. In the town of Quincy, northeast of Sacramento, a man was crushed to death in his home by a falling pine tree. Police say that tree toppled because of high winds. And near Modesto, a teenage boy was killed when a mudslide roared down a hill, knocking his car more than 300 feet down a slope. The car finally came to rest in a rain-swollen creek. In San Francisco, the problem was hail. Half inch of hail fell as a thunderstorm moved across the city today. And at San Francisco International Airport, about three quarters of an inch of rain fell today. That is on top of the inch that came down yesterday. 
Here in the Southland, we have plenty of our own weather-related problems today, including a rare tornado. Folks driving along uh, Interstate 5 in San Clemente could not believe their eyes as that twister passed overhead. Then the tornado headed for a residential area. It hit the ground. It knocked over a light pole and several trees. Scott Lindsay grabbed his video camera just as the tornado made a visit to his neighborhood. All those trees used to be all bushing together. Now they're all broken on the street. Right over there is a cement light that used to be in front of the house, and the tractor's blocking it now. The twister left behind a big mess, as you can see, but fortunately, no injuries. Two people remain hospitalized tonight after a Greyhound bus overturned in Northern California. The bus was on a mountain road near the Pacheco Pass summit at the time of the crash. It was on its way to Los Angeles from San Jose when it clipped a slower moving car and then flipped over. 17 people were taken to Doctors Hospital in Modesto to be checked out. Most of them were released, but two people remain in serious condition. Greyhound officials will not comment on that accident until they find out exactly what happened up there. Meanwhile, at the downtown Los Angeles bus station, Family members frantically waited on their loved ones to arrive. The uninjured passengers were brought into town on a replacement bus. The rain also caused the usual slew of accidents on Southland freeways. The driver of a trash truck lost control of his vehicle just off the 60 freeway at the 710. The truck flipped over and crashed into a light pole on the transition lane. And the weather caused similar problems to the east in the Inland Empire. Our Bob Donnelly was out in the rain and snow there. Heavy rains cause flooding in the usual areas in the low-lying valleys. For instance, Hermosa Street and Rancho Cucamonga look more like a flood control channel than a major thoroughfare. Isolated areas in this city as well as in nearby Ontario, Asperia and San Bernardino were all shut down due to the runoffs, though there were no reports of any major damage. Utilities were affected, power, phone and cable service were all temporarily out in some of the isolated areas. The rains and gusting winds were more than just an inconvenience in the local mountains. These poor souls stuck in a heavy downpour trying to put chains on their tires so they can make it to the top of the ridge. Problem is, few here seem to really know what they were doing. You know what you're doing? Uh, I have no idea. You have no idea? No idea. This is the first time you've ever done this? Yes. yes. Is it going to be the last time you ever do uh, this? I hope so. <laughs> are you guys nuts? Oh, uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> we came be. up for a week to go skiing, and it's it's just this is crazy. raining like crazy. <laughs> this is miserable. <laughs> well, it should be great the next couple of days skiing. Good you think, skiing, yeah. You think it's worth it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Do you know what you're doing down there? Yeah. I'm sure. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Positively. Is That's it worth right. all this? Yeah, it's worth it once you get up there. Once you get up there? Yeah, if whenever that is. Chains are required on all roads above the 5,000 foot level. Despite the warnings, despite the obvious need for additional traction, many here still get stuck in the snow. The highways literally littered with cars whose drivers have lost total control. Three to five inches of snow have fallen here over the past 24 hours. It makes for pretty pictures, but also power outages in some isolated communities. 2,000 left without electricity in Lake Arrowhead after a tree fell over a power line. In Running Springs, Bob Donnelly, Fox News. Today's storm left a lot of water behind the Sepulveda Dam, and that prompted officials to close at least three roads leading into the Sepulveda Recreation Area. Take a look at some pictures this morning of Burbank Boulevard. It was closed off between Balboa and Sepulveda Boulevards. Woodley Avenue was also closed between Victory and Burbank. Officials blocked the roads in order to prevent what happened earlier this year along Burbank Boulevard when dozens of motorists were stranded in their cars during floods. But believe it or not, the rain was not necessarily a nuisance to everyone. For some, it meant plenty of work and money in the bank. Jane Wells looks at that side of the stormy weather. Yeah, he's got water damage all in here. It was a good day for Jason Hunter of RT Roofing. Rainy weather always brings out the worst in worn out roofs. Right here, there's some coming down the wall, and it's right above his door, which could really do some damage to this if it's not fixed. It's a day when you remember where you've been keeping your bucket, or buckets. Water's kind of a love-hate relationship. You have to stop big jobs because of the weather, but the rain keeps more work coming for us, so. So somebody's benefiting from the rain. Sure, we are. So a good day for roofers, but a bad day for most everybody else. Starting early this morning, drivers once again tried to figure out how to get through those flooded intersections. 
power outages were a problem, not helped by the flooding out of this underground transformer. Bad day for traffic, too, as crews closed down morning rush hour lanes to fix a pothole on I-5 near Newhall. It was just one of those irritating days. Bad day for car dealers, bad day for builders, good day for those hired to clean up the mess. And you think today would be a bad day to go to a hair salon, right? Well, maybe not. I'm singing in the rain. Rain scares singing salonist Kyle Perino of the Kyle and Company Salon. It gets me a little bit nervous. But his place was packed today. Maybe it has something to do with the free entertainment. Much more than this, I did it my way. So why get your hair done today? Nothing else to do in Thousand Hopes either. Your hair, go shopping. And maybe there is a way to bring a little sunshine to a rainy day. New York, look towards me. New York. In Thousand Oaks, Jane Wells, Fox News. How's that band for this morning, huh? <laughs> an unusual standoff in an unusual place. A woman allegedly held hostage in a West Los Angeles synagogue by her former boyfriend. That's up next. And a little later, it is not like the movie. This woman leaves her children home alone, but gets arrested. And a dramatic escape to freedom as some Cubans hijack a plane and head to the U.S. All that still up. Mazda is celebrating five consecutive years of record car sales during the year-end clearance. These might be your Mazda dealer's best deals ever. And now you can be a part of it with exciting savings up to $1,000 affordable lease plans, and special incentives that can save you even more. But after January 5th, it's over. So come see why Mazda's on the move now. Mazda, it just feels right. Some of our most thrilling moments are provided by sports, and nowhere are the thrills greater than at Santa Anita. Azucar, ridden by George the Iceman Wolf, won the first Santa Anita Handicap, then the world's richest race in 1935. On New Year's Day at Santa Anita, Hollywood Park, and Los Alamitos, get this free set of coffee glasses commemorating Azucar's win. This great moment could only have happened at Santa Anita. Join us for your own great moments New Year's Day and get your free set of coffee glasses. It's the Yamaha liquidation sale going on now at Fields Piano and Organ. Hundreds of new and used pianos and organs are being sold at a fraction of the original cost. Southern California's largest volume dealer is having the biggest sale of the year just in time for the holidays. A new Kimball console piano, only $16.88. Or this new Kimball baby grand piano, only $36.88. Or Yamaha digital pianos, just $7.88. Everything in stock is backed by our guaranteed lowest price. Fields Piano, located in Santa Ana, Riverside, and Garden Grove. Call 800-43-PIANO. Don't miss this money-saving event. This year, drive the winner of the Rose Bowl, the Oldsmobile Achieva, official car of the Tournament of Roses. And Achieva was winner over Honda Accord and Toyota Camry in 100,000-mile quality tests, featuring standard equipment anti-lock brakes that you won't find on the competition. AM FM stereo cassette, air conditioning, all for only $199 a month on a 48-month lease. See the Achieva and other official Tournament of Roses cars at your Oldsmobile dealers today. Achieva, before you consider a quarter Camry, shouldn't you consider the car that beat them? A Southland woman is counting her blessings tonight after she was held hostage and beaten inside a synagogue in West Los Angeles for nearly two hours. Police say that a male custodian entered the Adat Shalom synagogue early this morning. The woman, a former girlfriend, joined him, and when she said no to his attempt to reconcile, he began to beat her. She was able to call the police, tell them that she was being held hostage. The woman then tried to jump out a window, and two officers helped her to safety. The suspect fled out the back door where police arrested him. Our camera crew was the only one allowed inside this Adat Shalom Synagogue as the elder checked things out. Apparently because uh, he got a broken liquor bottle here and it looks like they were using it here. You got a beer bottle on the table, uh, the remains of a cigarette package. Police say the suspect will probably be charged with assault with a deadly weapon and false imprisonment. Nearly three and a half years after the murders, Eric Menendez in the peach colored sweater and Lyle Menendez in the blue entered their pleas of not guilty in Los Angeles Superior Court today. The two brothers accused in the shotgun murders of their wealthy parents, Jose and Kitty Menendez, were shot at close range in 1989 inside their Beverly Hills mansion. The Menendez case has been delayed because prosecutors were not allowed access to tape recordings seized from the brothers' psychotherapist. Defense attorneys also requested today that transcripts and exhibits from the grand jury proceedings be sealed. They are afraid that this case will be tried in the media. New developments tonight regarding Ian Spiro. 
A tape recording of the British businessman indicates that Spiro did kill his family at their Rancho Santa Fe home in San Diego County and then committed suicide several days later. Authorities found the tape and a micro-cassette recorder among piles of documents inside two rain-soaked suitcases and a briefcase. Spiro did not specifically mention his family's killings or the plans that he had for suicide on that tape, but sources say his statements show that he was deeply depressed about money problems. A 72-year-old Garden Grove woman assaulted by two young teenagers because, as they say, she was an easy target. They robbed the woman of less than one dollar. Bernard Gonzalez spoke to the victim and her doctor. So now I want you to go ahead and move that around. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. And as long as you're in the sling, you should be uh, well taken care of. Dr. David Denany says it will take Justine Burns three to four months to recover from the broken elbow and shoulder she suffered in a mugging. Justine Burns says she'll never recover from the mental pain. That fear will never go away. The 72-year-old grandmother asked us not to show her face because her hair wasn't fixed. People who know her say that that's just how she is, sweet and concerned about the little things. It was a little thing that led to her mugging by two boys ages 13 and 14. She said she just wanted to get a little exercise. I decided to go for a walk. I, I haven't been walking for a long time, and I thought it's time I started. Justine had just moved into the Westbrook Royale Senior Apartments two weeks ago. She was going to this thrifty drugstore when she decided to take a shortcut many of the seniors used through this alley. I saw this woman bend down tying a shoe, but I didn't think anything about it. So uh, first thing I knew, I was on the ground. He knocked me down, and the other little fella grabbed my purse. Now, when Justine Burns was walking in this alley and knocked down, she never knew what hit her. If it wasn't for the work of a sharp-eyed person up on the second floor, the suspects may have gotten away. But there's a small irony here. Even though it was two young people who knocked her down, it was another one who helped her up. Officer Bob Bowers responded to the call. He told me Justine was mugged for 50 cents and that despite her pain, the two boys showed no remorse. That's what really concerns me about the whole thing. You got a lady laid in a hospital bed, uh, injured that badly, and the kids don't really care about it. Flowers in Justine's room remind her that there are good people in the world, but she says the mugging has changed her life forever. What will you do now when you want to go for a walk? Do I you won't. have this in the back of your mind? Yeah, I will go for a walk. No more. As for the boys, they're awaiting the DA's decision whether to prosecute or not. From Garden Grove, Bernard Gonzalez, Fox News. The Grinch that stole Christmas must have stopped by a home in Woodland Hills this holiday season. Someone stole a custom-made wheelchair. It belonged to an 11-year-old girl with cerebral palsy. Allison Smith needs that special chair to get around. It's worth about $5,000, and it was not covered by insurance, and Allison's mom cannot afford to replace the chair. If you have my daughter's chair, please bring it back. It, it's her life, and I don't have a lot of things, and that's the most prized possession I have is that chair. It was very expensive, and, and I can't do, I can't survive with, she can't survive without that chair. The wheelchair has a pink seat with black trim and is equipped to help Allison sit up. Someone broke into the family car to get the chair. Anyone knowing about this crime is urged to call the number here on your screen. It is 818-989-8543. The number again, 818-989-8543. An update now on a receded church that has been the target of arsonists three times now. The reward for information leading to the arrest of those responsible has been raised from $10,000 to $30,000. Members of the church raised the additional 20000 The most recent fire, which occurred December 13th, caused $300,000 in damage. Anyone with information about the fires is asked to contact the L.A. City Fire Department. What an extraordinary holiday season this has been for Orestes Lorenzo Perez, the former Cuban fighter pilot turned hero. Last week, he was flying 10 feet above the water in a light plane on his way to Cuba to get his family out. Tonight, as you can see, he was a guest on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. The two men, quite naturally, talked about Lorenzo Perez's daredevil flight. I read in the paper, they're calling you James Bond Lorenzo. <laughs> do, do you like that? Is that funny? Yeah, I, I don't think so. I'm not a James Bond. I'm just a father who loves his wife and yeah. children. I did what I had to do, and that's it. Now, how do you... How do you since Perez's brief foray into Cuba, he and his family have met with President Bush in Washington, but more important, the man was able to enjoy Christmas with his wife and the rest of his family. Earlier today at Miami International Airport, 47 other Cubans celebrated their flight to freedom after takeoff from Havana en route to a Cuban resort. 
The passengers lured the co-pilot into the cabin and chloroformed him and a security officer. The pilot then headed the plane north for Florida. Customs officials say the flight was carefully orchestrated, with the pilot being one of the main plotters. 47 of the Cubans asked for political asylum in this country. Another five asked to be returned to Cuba. A hero. That is what a Wilmington man is being called tonight for saving his seven grandchildren from fire on Christmas Day. The L.A. City Fire Department handed out the award today and also issued a warning. Lamar, you are a hero. Thank, Thank you sir. very much. This was an exciting day for Lamar Childress and his grandkids. Surrounded by the fire department's top brass, Childress was honored for quick action that saved his family from a Christmas Day fire. It just, just happened to us so fast. I didn't even know, uh, you know, know, know what was going on. I just heard the baby howling and that was it. Childress had struggled through searing heat and smoke to find and toss his seven grandchildren through the window of their burning apartment. One of the children had been playing with a lighter and accidentally set the Christmas tree on fire. He know, you know, that fire is fire now, you know. You got anything to play with, you know. As Childress was being honored, the fire department also warned, if you still have a live Christmas tree up, the fire danger is not over. I think with the weather that we're having now, people are putting on their heaters to stay warm and they're drying out quicker. And the safest thing is Christmas is over. I know a lot of people like to hang on until New Year's, but the safest thing you can do is just get them out of the house and safely dispose of them. The fire department also warned about the dangers of some protective iron bars. Make sure they unlatch from the inside and that all family members know how to operate them. Mr. Childress uh, did get the, you know, the children out and himself, but if he didn't have uh, the capability of getting out, we would have been here at a much more regrettable uh, situation today than we are now. Instead, it was a happy occasion, and luckily, only one of Lamar Childress's grandchildren was seriously hurt in the fire, but 11-month-old Michael Smith is expected to fully recover. Be sure you keep watering the Christmas tree. Oh, that's right. Or get rid of it, like you yeah. said. Christmas is over. A strange discovery at a popular Southland boating spot, some turtles that could really take a bite right out of a day of fishing or swimming. And the final touches are going on, and one Rose Parade float is getting some very special attention and a special blessing. Will it be rain or shine for the Rose Parade? We will fill you in on the week's weather. Snowfall totals, rainfall totals, all of it next. Mazda is celebrating five consecutive years of record car sales during the year-end clearance. These might be your Mazda dealer's best deals ever. And now you can be a part of it with exciting savings up to $1,000, affordable lease plans, and special incentives that can save you even more. But after January 5th, it's over. So come see why Mazda's on the move now. Mazda, it just feels right. Stop. Hold everything. Don't buy carpet this year. On January 1st, Carpeteria is having their biggest sale ever with no payments and no interest till 1994. Carpet, vinyl, hardwood, area rugs, and no payments or interest for one full year. Don't miss the biggest sale ever on the biggest selection anywhere. The incredible New Year's Day sale, 12 hours only, only at Carpeteria. There's a Savon Pharmacy near you, open 24 hours a day, seven days each week, to fill your prescriptions, to answer your questions, to be there whenever you need us. At Savon, you can count on people who care. Call 1-800-62-SAVON for the nearest 24-hour Savon. Here's what people are saying about Wild Bill's dinner extravaganza in Buena Park. I love the dancing and the singing. It was fantastic just loved it. Best show around. The show was great, the food was great, and I'll tell you what, the little kids just loved it. Brilliant. I like the Indian dancers, yeah. that was beautiful. The Rogue Girl was the best. Definitely gotta come and see the Rogue Girl. Come see how the West was fun. Call for reservations and showtime. It was fabulous. We had a fabulous time tonight. It was great. We loved it. Siskel and Ebert give two thumbs up to the perfect holiday movie. <laughs> From the heart of the land and the soul of a family. A river runs through it. A film by Robert Redford. Rated PG at theaters now. A few good men delivers pure star power. 
This is Tom Cruise at his best. Jack Nicholson gives his finest performance. And Demi Moore has never been better. A Rob Reiner film. A Few Good Men. Rated R. At theaters now. Some nasty creatures have been lurking below the surface at Castaic Lake, at least until today. Animal control officials have now nabbed a pair of 10-pound snapping turtles. These spiny-tailed reptiles are known for their very unfriendly disposition. Handlers say the pair posed a real threat to swimmers and anglers at the lake. The turtles were captured near some docks, but now the question is what to do with them. They are illegal to own here in California, so these two turtles are going to be destroyed unless a shelter or a zoo offers them a home. Big change is in store for a young mountain lion as well. The 50-pound cub is seen here all packed up, making a move from the city back to nature. Animal control workers are taking the lion from Chicago to a wildlife rescue and rehab center. The owner was forced to give up his lovable lion, and as if that weren't enough, not enough punishment, the man is being charged with possession of a dangerous animal. As for this rather large city kitty, he's going to live in a 7,000-square-foot wooded area that is very similar to a natural habitat. Earlier this hour, we showed you pictures of massive snowfall from up north, and the really good news is it has helped ease the California drought. But water officials are still being cautious, although the Sierra Nevada snowpack, the area where we get most of our water, is above normal. Reservoirs are still far below normal, and the drought is still on. So we could use some more rain, I guess, Mark Thompson? We can always use more rain. We like it in just, uh, you know, Spread intervals. Spread that will, out a little bit more. Right, yeah. that'll allow us to absorb it. But, yeah, good news. The uh, rain did move through, and as... Uh, Christine mentioned it looks like the high country will uh, will benefit. Now, uh, how much more rain? We'll talk about that. What's the story on Rose Parade morning? Well, you'll be watching Fox Channel 11 with our special expanded coverage. We will cover all of that in a minute. But first, I want to talk about what we got today. And it, it was very interesting. Most of the heavy rain moved through with the front, which was early this morning. But you'll notice after that, you probably noticed it through the day, off and on showers left us with variable amounts. Look at Ventura, about a half inch of rain. Tom Johnson, our weather washer there, but at Woodland Hills, Bill Reed reported just over an inch of rain. San Bernardino, Renee reported two and a quarter inches of rain. Lancaster with just 15 hundredths. Newhall, near an inch from Robert Footlick, our weather watcher there. Bob Conn, a thousand oaks, a little over a half inch. Here in Hollywood, six tenths. And over an inch and a half at Whittier. San Juan Capistrano, a third of an inch. So, variable amounts, depending on which cells ro rotated over. There it is, the San Bernardino Mountains. Snow fell today and will continue through the night, off and on in any case. And look at our snowfall totals. 34 inches at Sierra Ski Ranch up in the northern Sierra. Tahoe City with just under two feet. Mammoth with just uh, over two feet. Mount Baldy with an even foot. You can see on down from there as you get into the local mountains, we got a little under a foot. But I do think there is more snow on the way. I'll talk about that in a moment. Well, temperatures, of course, wasn't that a gorgeous rainbow? Look at that. Chris Christine? Ah, uh, pretty pretty. My agent Howard Lang shot that. Isn't that nice? <laughs> he's got time now that he's not working on my career any longer. 60. <laughs> oh, that's it. He's one of our photographers. I'm teasing him. 60 today at the Civic Center. Of course, held down were those temperatures by the clouds. 53 right now at Fox and Hollywood. Winds are south. Still the rain direction. Barometer 30.10. Look at the last 24 hours, and you will see, as I say, the heaviest rain accompanying the passage of the front. And you can also see those speckled clouds again, cold, unstable air associated with that cold, unstable air. Thunderstorms, you saw the hail we talked about earlier in the program, and also the high winds and even some tornadic activity that moved through the Southland. The parent low, the center of the low is to the north, but all this cold air will continue to pivot through and associated precipitation as well. So that means showers tonight, showers lingering the first part of tomorrow, then we should get to partly cloudy uh, conditions I would think by tomorrow afternoon. So we'll say showers ending by tomorrow morning or through the morning hours, we might see a little something. And then I do think we should see partly cloudy conditions, but you can see plenty of rain and snow still to our north. In fact, winter storm warnings continue north of uh, Sequoia in the uh, Sierra and south of Sequoia, it's a, uh, it's a snow advisory. But for all of the Southern California mountains through tonight, there's a winter weather advisory and you can see the snow level at 6,000 feet, probably another half a foot of snow in our local mountains to the south. 50s and 60s statewide for tomorrow in Southland region continue quite cool, although the rain, as I say, should begin to end tomorrow. 50s and 60s, pretty much the rule throughout the Southland. Showers tonight, lows in the 40s tomorrow. Morning showers should give way to partly cloudy conditions. Daytime highs 50s to about 60 degrees. The five-day outlook here is what is my best guess for the Rose Parade. I think it'll be dry. I really think uh, 
right now all the energy with the associated systems that will be moving through the state will be to our north. I'm going for dry conditions on New Year's Day, but we'll uh, continue to update you through the week. This is changing from take the sun to the bank to we're guessing. Did I use the time. words take the sun to the bank? <laughs> I don't think I heard Was that. I under oath when I used them? No, I think it'll be dry. Okay. All right, Mark, okay. thanks. If Britain is looking for a proper future queen, uh, Pasadena was the place to look this afternoon. Over 30 past Rose Parade queens gathered this afternoon at Caltech for what else? Brunch. Six decades of Rose Bowl history sat in the room. And the day took on a special note for the past queens. They presented a class of first grade hearing impaired students with costume fairs. Over at the floats, a traditional blessing ceremony took place in front of Malaysia's fifth Rose Parade entry, Fantasy on Parade. And if you're wondering, you bless a float with rose petals and rose water. Ceremonies performed to invoke good fortune for the float prior to and throughout the parade. A new weapon has been approved in the battle against cancer. That's coming up. But first, a real-life case of home alone. But this time, the parents return to find the cops waiting for them. And Jean Harris has spent 11 years in prison. Now she has been granted clemency for killing the author of the book, The Scarsdale Diet. And also, despite elaborate efforts to get them off the roads tonight, some startling and shocking new information about repeat drunk drivers. A dangerous raid on a drug den bags all the bad guys. Keep your hands behind your back! But with his parents being put away, a kid becomes a casualty of crime. Listen to me, okay? You are not going to go to jail. On Cops. Tonight at 11 on Fox 11. This New Year's Day, if you snooze, you won't lose. Watch extended live coverage of the Rose Parade only on Fox. Okay, some car dealers have a year-end event. You expect that, with the best deals in recent memory. You expect that, but without all the headaches and hassles about price, you don't expect that, because starting right now for a few days only, your Nissan dealer will have special prices clearly marked on the best selection of Nissans all year, including some very impressive incentives. Who'd expect that? Hurry in for the models you want at the unexpected event. It's new, it's now, it's from Nissan. You expect that. Say, this Norwich Safety Coated Aspirin is as effective as Ecotrin? Sure is. So it's okay for daily use? Sure is. You mean Norwich relieves my pain and cares for my stomach but costs less? That's all the relief at about half the price. Sure is. Arthritis, tendonitis, back pain. Cool it, heat it with Icy Hot. Icy to dull the pain, hot to relax it away. Fast-acting Icy Hot, Icy and Hot Therapy for Pain. Queen and King Sheets, $10.99. Cotton Flannel Twin Sheet Sets, $14.99. Famous Name Twin Comforters, $29.99. Where can you find these exceptional values? Only at Stroud's. Save 35 to 70% now during the biggest clearance sale of the year. Save on best-selling Royal Velvet Towels. Irregulars, now only $6.99. Queen and King Sheets from Spring Made and Wamsutta, $10.99. Spring Made 100% Cotton Classic Sheets, only $6.99 Twin. Now at Stroud's. It's Banner Carpet's biggest ever New Year's sale. Every carpet, every vinyl floor, every oak hardwood floor, 15 to 50% off now. This Friday only. This ski report is brought to you by Hollywood Pictures Aspen Extreme, ready PG-13. You're watching Fox 11 News. This story just into Fox News. One person is dead after a triple shooting tonight in South Central Los Angeles. It happened in the 5600 block of South Normandy Avenue. Besides the one person killed, two others were hurt. They've been taken to County USC Medical Center and reported to be in serious to critical condition. Police are looking for two suspects, male, Hispanics, who fled the scene in a small Toyota. No word on motive or if the shooting was gang-related. A real-life Home Alone story out of... Chicago tonight, a Chicago couple is being slapped with felony child abandonment charges. The couple took off for a nine-day vacation in Acapulco, leaving their two young daughters behind. The tan, David, and Sharon Shu were read their rights on board a plane after they landed at O'Hare Airport. The daughters, age four and nine, were left for nine days with only written instructions. A neighbor finally got suspicious and called police. 
Tonight, the shoes are in separate four-star jail rooms waiting for someone to post their $50,000 bail. After 11 years in prison, Gene Harris, convicted of killing Scarsdale diet Dr. Herman Tarnauer, was granted clemency. Harris found out just before undergoing heart surgery. New York Governor Mario Cuomo cited her age, health, and prison work as reasons for granting clemency. Harris and Tarnauer were lovers at the time she shot the author of the best-selling diet book. At the time, Harris claimed it was an accident. She is immediately eligible for parole. Two private studies of the economy tonight indicate that the American public is willing to spend money again. The conference board says consumer confidence this month is at its highest level in more than a year and a half. Another encouraging sign? The nation's realtors say that sales of existing homes in November were at their highest in nearly six years. But take a look at these startling numbers, if you will. Working women in California earn just about 69 cents for every dollar made by their male colleagues doing the same job. Full-time female employees are paid an average of just more than $25,000 a year compared to men who make well over $36,000. In all, women comprise 45% of California's workforce, but they earn less in virtually every job classification. Now, those figures are based on the 1989 U.S. Census Bureau. But on the medical front, some good news tonight for women. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has approved Taxol, the highly touted potential cancer-fighting drug. Could turn out to be the newest weapon in the fight against ovarian cancer. Taxol, made from the bark of the Pacific yew tree, has been found effective in reducing tumor sizes by half in at least 20% of test cases. The FDA says while the drug is not a cure, it can prolong life where other measures have failed. And more good news, the safety risk of traveling by car is declining. Transportation Secretary Andrew Carr projects this year's motor vehicle death rate will be 1.8 fatalities per 100 million vehicles traveled. That is the lowest death rate ever. Guard also projects the actual number of highway deaths this year will be below 40,000 for the first time in more than 30 years. These positive numbers are attributed to a significant increase in seatbelt use and a decline in the percentage of fatal accidents involving alcohol. But when it comes to drunken drivers, the statistics are still indeed depressing, especially when you realize that sometimes drunk driving offenders have often been convicted not once, but two, even three times. Victor Vasquez has more. What happened? Um, a drunk driver went on the side of the road and he, and he killed Grandpa and Grandma. She's only four years old, and it may all seem like a game because she's on TV for the first time. But little Rachel Isaiah already knows how to talk about the death of her grandpa Frank and her grandma Carrie, both victims in a head-on collision with a driver who had already been convicted three times of driving under the influence of alcohol. However, this time, 27-year-old Enrique Pacheco was not just drunk, he was high on drugs. A PCP, but um, the primary uh, substance, I believe, was alcohol. The collision also claimed the life of a passenger in the drunk driver's car, a 24-year-old man who, like the driver, had a wife and children. In all, it totals three people dead and a repeat drunk driver who lived to face three counts of second-degree murder as a result of the deaths in the head-on collision. Now he faces a prison term of 15 years to life for each conviction. Uh, this is a murder. This is an act of murder. When your family is killed in, in this manner, there's, there's no way to explain it to your children. There's no way to explain it to yourself. There's, there's no sense in this. In the meantime, the Asaya family is left with only photographs of grandma and grandpa. If it hadn't been for mothers against drunk drivers, the Asaya family would have had an even harder time getting through it all. They handheld us through this whole or tragic ordeal. Um, they've supported us. They've, um, they've just kind of hugged us through this. Victor Vasquez, Fox News. Life is hard when you're in the military, and it is brutally hard when it is Christmas time and your loved one is overseas. Earlier this evening at Camp Pendleton, Marine Corps General Carl Munday spoke before an auditorium of weary, uh, worried women whose husbands are in Somalia. Munday is currently stateside from the Horn of Africa, and while here, he's going to make visits to West Coast Marine installations, answering questions from loved ones about the U.S. mission in Somalia. In Somalia itself, Marines patrolling in northern Mogadishu as they try to bring that lawless capital under some sort of control. Military planes dropped 100,000 leaflets on all parts of the city, warning that looting and killing will not be tolerated. The new push and a crackdown on people carrying guns 
comes as U.S. troops prepare to welcome President Bush on New Year's Eve. He'll meet with the Marines and visit an International Red Cross hospital and feeding center. And the Defense Department is saying that Iraq is playing a very dangerous game. Word tonight that more Iraqi warplanes have now penetrated that no-fly zone over southern Iraq. This just one day after American airmen shot down a MiG that had violated that flight ban. The Iraqi warplanes entered the zone, but they turned back after they were, being, uh, after they were intercepted. Noth uh, no weapons were fired. Iraq has vowed to retaliate for the downing of that plane on Sunday. U.S. and Russian negotiators are making progress at the nuclear summit. The diplomats have come to a compromise on three final issues, and they are ready to wrap up the nuclear arms reduction treaty known as START II. The treaty will greatly reduce the arsenal of nuclear warheads in Russia and the U.S. Secretary of State Lawrence Eagleburger says President Bush and Russian leader Boris Yeltsin will meet soon to sign the accord. And in Brazil, President Fernando Collor resigned just as the Brazilian Senate began formal impeachment procedures against him. But the Senate went on and convicted Collor of corruption. Collor has been dogged by scandals, influence peddling, and dipping into a $6 million slush fund. Ironically, Collor was elected into office on a clean government platform. Because he resigned, Collor loses his presidential immunity and can be prosecuted on criminal charges. Collor's former Vice President Itamar Franco was sworn in as the new president. Work crews in China had a big-time problem on their hands. You see, the question was how to move a mountain to expand an airport. The solution? More than 11,000 tons of dynamite, the explosion equivalent to the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The blast sent seismic reporters jumping in Hong Kong more than 27 miles away. Oh, I bet. Wow. More legal troubles for actor Todd Bridges. After a well-publicized battle with drugs and the law, he is back in jail. And meet Derek Smalls, a.k.a. Harry Shearer. He's one of the minds behind the popular rock band parody, Spinal Tape. A Spinal Tap. There you go. Spinal Tap and a lot more coming up. Think about your daily dreams and what you would do <laughs> if you want a million. It's marvelous. Can you believe it? Miracles can happen. Can happen for you. Publishers can help. One name in American luxury cars offers the safety of dual airbags on every model. Lincoln. And now, Lincoln Continental, the first American luxury car to offer dual airbag protection, announces the safe lease. Now, the safety of Lincoln Continental at just $399 per month with a 24-month red carpet lease. The safe lease on Lincoln Continental. For all the details, see your Lincoln Mercury dealer today. It's Banner Carpet's biggest ever New Year's sale. Every carpet, every vinyl floor, every oak hardwood floor, 15 to 50% off now. This Friday only. You're too busy for the discomfort of your period. Cramps, bloating, headache, water gain. You're not yourself. Advil and Tylenol only relieve pain. Do it right. Take multi-symptom pamperin. Get yourself back together again. Multi-symptom pamperin. Period relief, not just pain relief. People living with pain keep thanking me. Thanks, Joe. For Flexol 454, the aloe vera-based pain-relieving gel recommended by the athletic trainers in all major pro sports. Thanks, Joe. Living with pain? Get better. Get Flexol, the pain relief pro trainers recommend. Hi again, everybody. Regis Philbin here with another Jenny Cray client, Lulu Baskins Leva. Now, let's take a look at what Lulu looked like. And then you went to Jenny Cray. Absolutely. Tell me about that. I had this fabulous counselor. And she had a thin answer for all my fat questions. Uh -huh. And it's not a diet. It's about how to eat. And the same thing can happen to you. Just call Jenny. Call us right now and lose all the weight you want for just a dollar a pound. Just a dollar a pound to lose all you want. Pick up the phone and dial 1-800-68-JENNY. Former child actor Todd Bridges, best known for his role on the sitcom D Different Strokes, is behind bars again. Police in Burbank arrested Bridges today for possessing one and a half grams of methamphetamine, the speed. This is video of Bridges in a Los Angeles courtroom over two years ago. He was also charged today with illegal possession of a loaded weapon. Police believe he was under the influence of narcotics when he was arrested. In 1989, he was acquitted in the attempted murder of a crack dealer.
This was an exciting night in the entertainment business. Nominations for the 50th Annual Golden Globe Awards are out. The awards honor the year's best in both film and television. And this year, there are some big names in the running. One of the favorites at this year's ceremony is the military drama A Few Good Men, grabbing five nominations, including Best Picture. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Leading man Tom Cruise is up for Best Actor, Jack Nicholson earning a nomination for Best Supporting Actor. Let me take your Odell, jot it down. You ain't never had a friend like me. <laughs> the other frontrunner is Disney's animated musical, Aladdin. The cartoon feature also nabbed five nominations. The film is the odds-on favorite in several musical categories, and Aladdin was also nominated in the Best Comedy or Musical category. Here's a look now at the nominations for Best Actor in the Drama. Denzel Washington for his portrayal of Malcolm X. Jack Nicholson, Hoffa, Tom Cruise for that role in A Few Good Men, Al Pacino in A Scent of a Woman, and Robert Downey Jr. as film star Charlie Chaplin. Internal Affairs knew. Your wife knew too, didn't she? Sharon Stone set the screen on fire with her performance in the psychological thriller Basic Instinct, and Stone was nominated for Best Actress, but she has some very tough competition. Mary McDonnell for Passion Fish, Michelle Pfeiffer, Love Field, Susan Sarandon in Lorenzo's Oil, and Emma Thompson for Howard's End. I am not like Mom. In the television category, Me, Roseanne God. and Northern Exposure each got four nominations. Get out of here. What are you come talking? on, come on, oh, we gotta run. run. And Cheers, in its final season of production, earned three Golden Globe nominations. The Golden Globe winners are to be announced on January 23rd. Rock band Spinal Tap may be the biggest inside joke of the music industry. Eight years ago, the group became a parody of heavy metal headbangers. And since then, they have confused and delighted fans worldwide. Laurie Pike talks with one of the band's founding members, actor Harry Shearer. Spinal Tap began as a parody of heavy metal for a 1984 film. But Christopher Guest, Michael McKean, and Harry Shearer learned that many fans couldn't tell the difference, and others didn't care. Now, after a long hiatus, the fictional band has reunited for an NBC special and the inevitable home video. Yeah, it was really totally by chance that we got back together because uh, our manager, Ian Faith, died. And we all met at the funeral. That's, that's what brought us back together, the funeral. And it was such a, a joyous funeral. It was such a celebration of death. In real life, Smalls is played by Harry Shearer, one of L.A.'s true renaissance men. Weekends, he writes and hosts Le Show on KCRW Radio, required listening for anyone who finds politics amusing. This is a less than joyous Christmas for Casper Weinberger, former Secretary of Defense. His friends in Washington are uh, still lobbying George Bush to uh, get him a pardon. Shearer has done Le Show for free for nine years now. I value it because uh, no money changes hands so that nobody can tell me anything about it. It's very rare to have that kind of uh, pure, untrammeled access to a, a what still in the real world, world counts for mass audiences on all over the country. If you've never heard Le Show, perhaps you recognize Shearer's voice from someplace else. Look at that pig stuffing his face with donuts in my time. Now, if I wanted to tell you all the amazing facets to this man, it'd take the whole newscast. So anytime someone tells you that L.A. is a cultural wasteland, just remember, there's a lot more to the inhabitants here and its visitors than long hair and leather pants. In Hollywood, Laurie Pike, Fox News. A big change in the world of fashion up next. It's turning out to be the power tie of the 90s, and wait till you hear who is behind it. And for one school, it is the biggest game ever. For the other, it is a major disappointment. Coming up, highlights of the USC and Fresno State in the Freedom Bowl. Does your choice of TV program seem limited this time of year? Then come to the warehouse. We have thousands of hit movies for rent. My parents think we're married? You're a con artist! You're not getting serious on me, are you? Call me. Only $1.79. Every rental, every day. Even weekends. The warehouse. A message from your Southern California Chevrolet Geo dealers and gold medal winner Oscar de la Hoya. I think the kids in the neighborhood respect me. When they ask me about my experiences, I tell them, go for your goal. Reach for your dream. Put education first. 
And please, stay away from drugs and gang violence. Your Chevy dealers share these beliefs. Their proud Chevrolets have always been in Oscar's family, from his dad's Monte Carlo to his brother's Camaro to Oscar's Corvette. When you have a dream, anything's possible. It's Banner Carpet's biggest ever New Year's sale. Every carpet, every vinyl floor, every oak hardwood floor, 15 to 50% off now. This Friday only. The Ross After Christmas Clearance. Everything you wanted for Christmas but didn't get is now available at huge savings. The Ross After Christmas Clearance, on now. Where can you find Martex Irregular Velex Answer Blankets for only $19.99 twin? Only at Stroud's year-end sale and clearance. Savings up to 70%. Gentlemen, gentlemen, the tobacco industry has a very serious multi-billion dollar problem. We need more cigarette smokers, pure and simple. Every day, 2,000 Americans stop smoking. And another 1,100 also quit. Actually, technically, they die. That means that this business needs 3,000 fresh new volunteers every day. So forget about all that heart disease, cancer, emphysema, stroke stuff. <laughs> We're not in this business for our health. <laughs> Some automakers would have you believe that total isolation from the road is the ultimate luxury. But the Acura legend was designed for a very different type of driver. One who believes that if a luxury car completely isolates you from the driving experience, it isn't really a driving experience. Test drive a 1993 legend today at your Southern California Acura dealer. Well, did you get one for Christmas? If you didn't, you're missing out on something big. Take a look at this. It is the power tie of the 90s. It's Jerry Garcia's. That's right, the Jerry Garcia of the Grateful Dead. Ties are reproductions of the guitarist's artwork over two decades. Even high-profile types want to get their hands on them. Al Gore, vice president-elect, was shown in a magazine wearing one, as was Chicago Bulls coach Phil Jackson. Rick Garcia, no relation to... Jerry Garcia. In fact, none of the Garcias I'm related to have anything close to that. I, we, I've seen a few couches yeah. in the Garcia family that look like that side. But, uh, oh, Rick. I'm sorry. Two sports. Okay, yeah. You know, it, it's something funnier than SC today. I'll tell you. You know, and bowl games are supposed to be fun. Right. It's not important who wins or loses, but, you know, it is the time of year. The college football teams reap the rewards of their success. And tonight, two California schools did just that when they met in Anaheim Stadium for the Freedom Bowl. USC yeah, met Fresno State, and uh, these two teams were out for blood, even if it was the referees the Trojans had their hands full from this bulldog team that had moved its program to a new level but Dion Struther managed to dive in for a 7-0 SC lead Fresno tied it took the lead then patted it on Anthony Daigle's touchdown Fresno State's biggest win ever 24-7 is Larry Smith and USC's low point now you can almost feel the tension spilling out of Anaheim Stadium tonight because although bowl games are supposed to be rewarding win or lose, the Freedom Bowl was the epitome of contrast. Fresno State was playing in perhaps the biggest game in the history of the school. While there are those at USC who would say the game was an insult to its proud tradition, Gary Apple explains. For USC, this was a night not to remember. It was a long way from the Trojan glory days and from the prestige of the Rose Bowl. Is it a little embarrassing being in the Freedom Bowl against Fresno State? Not at all, not at all. Our team is number one, we're gonna show them. No, 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 come on, you're not number one now. Oh, oh, yes we are. Compared to these guys, we're top of the heap, man. And that's what some Trojans thought anyway, that Fresno State was a minor league team compared to the once mighty Trojan, with the emphasis there on once mighty. It's always tough to swallow, especially when you lose at the end of the year, but you know, Things happen and, you know, you just got to take it like a man. For Larry Smith, the night could not have been soggier. If he felt pressure coming into the game, it's now been turned up about five notches as his bowl record has dropped to two, five, and one. I feel humiliated. I think the team feels humiliated. And uh, that's not to take any away from Fresno State because they played an excellent football game and um, deserved to win. But for Fresno State, this was the biggest win in school history. And the more than 20,000 Bulldog fans who made the trip to Anaheim felt it was well worth their while. We're starting the decade of beating USC just like Notre Dame did. We're going for 10 years. Fresno We had something to prove for sure. And did you prove it? Yes, I think without a doubt. What statement did you make? I mean, the Fresno State football is alive and kicking, and we can compete with anybody in the nation. 
USC ends the season with a record of six wins, five losses, and a tie. And although on paper that is a winning record, it is a losing feeling they have in their stomachs tonight. A far different feeling than that of Fresno State. At the Big A in Anaheim, I'm Gary Apple, Fox News. And uh, for those of you who think there are too many college bowl games, I've got bad news for you. <laughs> Tonight is just the beginning. There was another bowl game featuring the possible first pick in next year's NFL draft. Washington State's Drew Bledsoe led his team to a 21-0 lead against Utah in the Copper Bowl. He hooked up with Philip Bobo for an 86-yard TD in the first quarter. Bledsoe tossed for 476 yards. And Washington State held on for a 31-28 victory. On the ice, Kings goalie Kelly Rudy was probably feeling pretty good when L.A. scored two goals in the first two minutes against the Flyers. He wasn't feeling good for long. Brian Benning scores. Brent Fiedike scores. Rod Brindamore scores. And Kevin Deneen also puts one in the net. This was all in the first period. Philly, without Eric, uh, Eric Lindros, Roughing up the Kings, and they beat them badly tonight. On the ice, Chicago was a winner over Charlotte. 36,000 watched Seattle beat Boston, Golden State over Houston. New York got past Indiana. Cleveland was a winner. And uh, look at Sacramento's win against Dallas, the seventh largest margin of victory in NBA history as Dallas cannot get any lower. Well, the kids these days. There was a time when end zone celebrations were the highlight of the game, but now... What the college football player has in talent, he lacks in creativity. We'll take you back to the Copper Bowl. And Philip Bobo had just scored a touchdown when, watch him join up with a teammate for a less than dramatic display. Uh, I mean, it's just hard to top the old days of Billy uh, White Shoes Johnson, isn't it? Let's go back to the Freedom Bowl now. Ron Rivers scored one of the biggest touchdowns in Bulldog history. I mean, what is this? These guys got to start watching uh, Soul Train and uh, some of the other dance shows, you know, like MTV, to get an idea how to get the moves back in uh, college football, don't you think? All right, Rick. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh. We have time now for a quick check on that tense barricade situation in Torrance we told you about at the top of the hour. An armed man barricaded inside the Lexus automobile headquarters there. Let's check in with Christina Gonzalez now, a live update. Christina? Well, Chris, we're at a standstill right now. We remind you, we have to keep our lights off because we are standing right in front of the building where the man went in at about 4.30 this afternoon shooting. Now, no one was hurt. Everybody got out, and we believe he has no hostages in there, only the man who once again says he is disabled, and it seems that he has problems with Lexus's hiring practices as it relates to disabled people. Again, negotiations are ongoing. The man continues inside. Side, and we are going to be standing by and tell you what happens out here in Torrance, where I'm live. Christina Gonzalez, back to you in the newsroom. Okay. All right, Christina, thank you. We'll, of course, have a complete update on that story tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. And now you are up to date on a Tuesday. Stay well. Good night.